Dynamic effect playbacks in Cobalt can play one dynamic effect template at a time, which makes it really easy to switch from one type of shape to another. The downside could be that in order to play multiple dynamic effects, you need to have multiple dynamic effect playbacks inserted into your show file. So for example, what we're going to do now is we're going to pile on a number of dynamic effects onto our 12 lights here until we're happy. And then we're going to try and record that somewhere. We have a couple of choices. We can record all three of those dynamic effect playbacks into a preset or onto a master and recall them that way using those three playbacks all the time. The advantage to doing that is I can select any part of that running combined dynamic and adjust speed or offset or any of the parameters of those multiple running effects at one time, which is great. However, there may come a time where you wish that you could get all of that combined activity compressed down into a single effect playback because you know in this particular case that effect is always going to run on those 12 lights in the same way every time. And so you want to have a quick and easy way to recall that particular combination to that particular set of lights. So that's what we're going to show in this particular example then. So I'm going to start by configuring my effect playbacks first by Selecting my group of MMX spots, we'll keep it at circle. I'm going to get that circle running at some type of speed. Right now, because I know I'm going to pile these things on, I'm actually going to run the effect playback to full and then change the size down in the effect parameters themselves. This helps keep clear what's going on on the effect without having multiple scaling factors applied. The intensity of the effect playback is a scaling factor on the size of the effect. So in this case, I want to work in a more pure, a more specific space. And that means working on the parameters of the effect itself and leaving the playbacks at full. This will guarantee your results. So I have my circle running. That's great. My lights are at a level. They are not at full. They are somewhere in between. And I'll just run that up and down so you can see that I'm stopping somewhere in between. And I'll select another effect playback. So in this case now I want the same lights, my group one, and I'm going to apply that smooth intensity effect that we've seen before and I'm going to run that up to full. And so now you can see I've got a panning, tilting, fading combination of dynamics running. Intensity's on one, pan tilts on another playback. This is kind of cool. All right, I'm happy with this, except maybe I would like my intensity effect to run faster. So that's what I'm doing now is I can adjust the rate on the intensity part of the effect using playback number 22 and leave the pan tilt effect running at the old speed because they are separated. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with this. We'll pile on a third one. So here's my third, my effect number 23 in this case. I'm gonna select a group, but not the whole group. I'm just gonna select, oops, I'm gonna select one electric, so six of my 12 lights, half of the lights. And instead of running circle, I'm gonna go searching for a nice color something. And we'll pick royal, because that's how I roll. And we'll run that up to full. So now I have a panning, tilting, intensity fading, somewhat color changing, combination of effects running that could be all running at different speeds, could be running at different offsets, uh, could be running with different delay relationships, etc. All of these parameters are under my control at this moment because I have the three individual effect playbacks available to me. But in this example, I want to play this particular effect, this panning, tilting, color changing, intensity fading combination of stuff in this way at the drop of a hat. So what I'm going to do is instead of selecting the effect playbacks, I'm actually going to select the group of lights themselves, the 12 individual lights that are running these dynamic effects. And it's important in this case to select the lights that are actually being affected and to not select the dynamic effect playbacks uh, because the system needs to look at how these 12 lights are interacting with each other. And it knows that by selecting the channels themselves. So I've selected group one which is my 12 lights. And now I'm going to go into the dynamic template list 
And I showed you in another tutorial that you can just select that from the browser if you wish. A shortcut to selecting that is to say modify dynamic effect, and it will open the same list again. So modify key plus dynamic effects, let go. It opens up that tab with all of the templates in it. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom so we can see what happens. You can see here are the 80 canned effects that we already have, but I want to take a snapshot of what's running on these 12 lights. So all I'm going to do is hit insert. The console will ask me if I wish to record the running dynamics as one dynamic effect template. In this case, yes, I would. So I'm going to hit modify. And now you can see it's added a row 81. I can give it a name, my FX. And you can see over here now that there are a bunch of parameters included in this effect. Intensity, pan tilt, cyan, magenta, and in this case, amber. But it's too wide, so that shows you a plus. It indicates there's more parameters in this particular list. When I hit modify, we will now see an incredibly complicated looking dynamic effect template. And that is because the system is taking a snapshot of the dynamic effects running on each of the 12 lights in this particular grouping of channels. The first light in that grouping is indicated by the channel index 1, the second light in that grouping, channel index 2, and so on, as you go down the list. So what you can see here is the first channel is running an intensity sine wave effect with this particular offset size and so on. A pan tilt effect, our circle, remember, running those particular size and offset information. And then the royal effect, which is running on cyan, magenta, and yellow with Actually, we didn't make many adjustments to that at all, so it's running just straight up. The second channel is doing a similar thing. And as I roll down past channel number six, remember we only put the color effect on half the lights. So now you can see that channel seven here is only running the intensity, pan, and tilt effects. And then it runs into the eighth channel in the grouping. So this particular template is literally going to create the look you see on stage as far as the effects are concerned whenever you apply it using a single dynamic effect playback. So I will close this. I will close the list. It's effect number 81, remember. I will select the three running effects we have now and home them. So now the lights go back to nowhere. And I will turn those effect playbacks off. I'm going to reset the cake I baked earlier, get my lights into place put them at about half intensity. And I can now choose a single effect playback, effect 21. Grouping should be the same grouping you use to create this snapshot in the first place. So it's group one, the whole thing. Dynamic template number 81, which is the one we inserted called my effects, leave everything else the same. No messing about. And when I bring that up now, you can see that it will roll in and give us something similar to what we had before. Now, I wasn't very scientific in how I placed these lights or how bright they are. And we could have changed the color of the iris or any other part of this or pointed the lights somewhere completely differently. For example, I could point them at a different focus position, for example. It's still running or trying to run that circle effect, that intensity effect, and that color effect on those six lights. The outcome looks different because remember, we're still just creating math that will run on whatever base point you've chosen. So to really create the exact look, you need all the base point information plus this template. But what this also does is it gives you an opportunity to create these more complex things and throw them onto single dynamic effect playbacks in a live scenario and get a very different looking sort of thing happening very quickly without having to combine six or eight or however many dynamic effects on top of each other to get the look you want. So feel free to use this, inserting running dynamic effects back into the library. Uh, it can be very helpful if these are the types of effects that you like in your shows. Thanks.